Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head down to Nottingham and if memory serves me correctly this is the first beer that I'm trying from there. Uh, Harriet Blue Nose Beer Reviews is the one you want to keep an eye out for if those are the kind of, or if that's the area of beer that you're interested in. But for this one we're going to review my first beer from the Black Iris Brewery. This one is called Lacerated Sky. It comes in at 9% ABV and it's a style that I really love. This one is an Imperial Red and I think, you know, my love of this style probably started when I was in New Zealand at actually, because the New Zealand hops, you know, they just blow my mind a little bit. I had a beer called First Blood from Eight Wired in uh, one of the pubs down there, and it was just, it was really, really good. I really loved that beer, and ever since, this style's been a little bit special to me. So hopefully this is a good one, and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, of course, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Black Iris Brewery. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers of course there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the english beers that i've reviewed for you that's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway, to tell you a little bit about the Black Iris Brewery then. So the Black Iris Brewery was founded by friends Nick Falkert and Alex Wilson and the pair met around, around 2009 when they were working together in the Lincolnshire Poacher. From what I understand, that is a pub. Do please correct me on this if I'm wrong. But um, it is also a type of cheese as well. I had thought that it might have been like a you know, it might have actually been a newspaper or, or, you know, something like this, just something that's kind of local. But Alex apparently was really, always really interested in brewing. So he took a few weeks off from work and he went and did a home brewing course at Brew Lab in Sunderland. And it was then that the pair actually started to do some home brewing together afterwards. But soon they learned that the Flower Pot pub in Derby had an unused 5 BBL brewery at the back. And so they managed to organise a few meetings with the owner. And eventually it was agreed that they could actually rent this brewery out. So they set up their company officially and they brewed their first beers there on the 1st of August 2011. So they established themselves over the next few years and then they decided to move to Basford in Nottingham in 2014 and they bought a new 10 BBL kit to brew with and they increased their capacity once again in 2017 and from what I understand they have been going from strength to strength since then. So yeah, an interesting company that's definitely on the rise. This was one that Harry told me do some pretty nice beers and the Imperial Red as I say. I saw this brewery, the artwork caught my eye, uh, which it does tend to do when it comes to beer with me. I love like these kind of metal style artworks. That's why I love buying my heavy metal CDs, you know, because the artwork work is always awesome on them. It's better than just downloading them in my opinion. But I love the artwork on this and it was an Imperial Red so I thought you know I'm going to have a go at this and Harry told me that they are quite a good brewery as well. From what I understand they've produced quite a few different beers. I mean they've been around for about seven years now so they are going pretty strong and this was one that just caught my eye. So yeah I read on Untapped actually. Incidentally the rating this beer had on Untapped was a 3.85. I think on Rate Beer it had something like an 89 or so. It wasn't so highly rated within the style but it actually said in the little blog bit when I was checking out the untapped rating it said that it was apparently brewed for fans of Slayer so that would be quite interesting Hale Hanneman and all these kind of things I love that so Slayer I do enjoy a little bit of them I was disappointed when I read they were doing their last tour but as you can see nice little bit of almost Illuminati style artwork on this one I do like that actually the sort of spray painty type thing it has there on the back you can see the Black Irish Brewery symbol it doesn't actually tell you too much about the beer it just says brewed and canned at Black Irish Brewery Unit 1 at 27 Shipston Street Nottingham uh, it tells you a little bit about the allergy advice but nothing about the hops or malts and things that go into this beer but there you can see there's the twitter and stuff for the brewery as well so yeah let's get this guy out then and get on with the tasting as i told you at the start of the video this one is a nine percent imperial red and i think if i remember correctly it was beer moth in manchester that i uh, bought this beer at so yeah went on a nice little bottle shop trip there so yeah that looks really nice actually. So yeah, as you can see, this beer's poured a really nice kind of dark, coppery, mahogany colour. If I hold up to the light actually, yeah, I think mahogany is a good way to describe this beer. I'm not sure how well you can see that on the camera, but there's a solid finger of a frothy, slightly beigey tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. You can see one or two little bits of sediment just kind of floating around in the bottom there, but overall it does look pretty nice. And I tell you something, the nice kind of caramelly and biscuity notes that are coming off this beer are very... Uh, 
kind of representative of the style. It looks really, really nice and it smells really, really nice as well. So just take a little look at that. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see it's not really transparent at all. But yeah, it looks pretty nice. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. Ooh. Yeah, you definitely get a nice bit of that boozy note to it, which is quite interesting. Yeah, some nice caramel in there. Quite toasty, actually. There's a little bit of a biscuity sweetness to it as well. I love the, the malt basis that you get on these Imperials. It's almost like it's got a little bit of a red rye or kind of cakey note to it as well, which is interesting. As I say, I love this style of beer. It's, it's, you don't often come across them. There's not many breweries have a go at these kind of styles. And it can be one that's quite difficult to master, but if it's done well, it can be really bloody good. But yeah, this one, it definitely leans more towards the malty side of things, as you would expect. When you sugar it up, there's a nice little bit of a woody note. Yeah, woody, almost a little bit kind of woody, spicy kind of note as well. Like I'm saying, some sweet caramel, quite toasted actually, a little bit of biscuity sweetness, and there's almost a kind of brown bready, rye quality to it. Not quite cakey, I think that cakiness was wrong. But yeah, the, the malt base on this one is really, really interesting. On the hoppy side of things, you can get a little bit of earthiness. There's a sort of slightly grassy and floral type thing in there. It's not too pungent in that regard. There is a little bit of fruit as well. I want to say there's a wee bit of a kind of orangey note to it. Yeah, a little bit of an orangey note, I think, and some kind of maybe grapefruits as well. Yeah, there is definitely a little, an element of that darker kind of grapefruity tropical fruit note. I want to see a bit of orange, but there is a nice little bit of a red, kind of candied fruity ester to it as well, which is interesting. Yeah, you know, it's got a little bit of a kind of candied strawberry or something like that to it. Maybe figs or something like that. It's definitely, and that, that was maybe what was making me think of the cake in a cellar, because it does have a little bit of that boozy kind of red fruity note to it. Rum cake or something like that. That's maybe a good descriptor, actually. But yeah, just take a little bit of time. And enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. As I always say, that's half the experience when it comes to these craft beers. So let's get stuck into this one then. This is the Lacerated Sky, an Imperial Red beer at 9% from the Black Iris Brewery down in Nottingham in England. Let's get stuck in. Slanger, Skirl. Ooh. It's pretty nice, but I'll tell you something, it's going to take a few sips for me to adjust to that. As I always say, when it comes to beers that are a little bit more malt forward, particularly the darker ones like Imperial Stouts and things, sugar the beer around your palate a little bit and just let your whole mouth adjust to it, but this is nice. Yeah, this is interesting, because for me, just on impressions of the style, if you like, it's got a really nice, the malt base on this one it has a, a little bit of diversity to it, the hops straight up, it's an American style red beer in that sense, the malt base does have a good bit of that American quality as well, but you can taste a little bit of the English malt coming out as well, so the malt base has a little bit of that kind of classic thing from the style that you expect from the old relays and stuff like this, but it does have a good bit of the presence you expect from the, the, the kind of modern American takes on the style. But that's nice. I'll tell you straight away, I do like this. I wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. It's nicely done. So yeah, the malt, let's start with the malt base then. So yeah, you can feel there's a little bit of that kind of pale malty character just blankets the middle of your palate. The beer, as I was saying, when you move further and further into the aftertaste, it does have, there is an almost almost a little bit of a kind of spicy note from the malt base. It definitely has some sort of woody spice or a kind of rye cereal spice or something like that. I'm not quite sure it's rye. It doesn't seem quite sweet enough to be rye. It's definitely a little bit more kind of spicy than that. It's almost a little bit like peppery or something, which is quite interesting, but it adds a nice touch to the beer and it goes well. The hops you'll notice on this are quite, compared to what I was noticing in the aroma, um, in the taste they are actually quite floral and they've got a little bit of spice to them as well, so it really does build a good bridge between the, the two parts of the beer. And as your mouth kind of mellows out and gets a bit closer to this, or, and gets a bit more used to this beer if you like, 
you can pick up more of the kind of caramelly notes right in the middle of your palate. You'll feel this kind of circle and it's got the nice sweet caramel. It's quite toasty. There's a little bit of biscuity grainy note in there. As I was saying, that's kind of backed up with this woody, almost woody, peppery kind of spicy thing. And it's um, the beer you do get this almost kind of boozy cakey quality out of it as well which is quite nice as I say the, the boozy cakey note comes out a little bit more in the aftertaste you've seen how long it was since I took a sip of this one but that boozy cakey note is starting to come out there now and that, spi that almost peppery spicy quality is just sitting there as well on the hoppy side of things, back corners of the palate for me is definitely earthy I do wonder if they've used a little bit of English hop in this just to kind of um, you know, just as a, a sort of bittering hop. It's definitely a little bit earthy. As you come forward, just a slight touch, it's a little bit herbal, but then as you push forward along the sides of the palate, it's definitely got a little bit of that nice kind of uh, floral aromatic note coming out of it. And round the front curve of the tongue, it's got that typical lighter kind of grassy flavour to the beer. It's nice and oily as well. The mouthfeel of this one's really nice. Suits it down to the ground. But yeah, with this beer, the, as I said, you can pick up a little bit of that grainy note that I'm talking about, even with the fruity side of things. But yeah, grassy around the front curve of the palate. If you just go behind that front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get the little oily bubble where these fruity notes come out. For me, there's a little bit of a grapefruity note just kind of underpinning the beer. On top of that, it's got a little bit of an orange quality to it. It's quite a dark orange that comes out of this one, actually. And then as you progress further and further into the aftertaste, it mellows out and you do start to get just a little bit of a red fruity note, but it's an interesting one. It's kind of like candied fruit, like these these little heart-shaped sweets in Harry Bo Starbucks. I always use that as a, as a descriptor. A lot of these red fruity notes, the candied red fruits, that's what it always reminds me of. But I think there's maybe a little bit of a maybe a strawberry note or something there. So, but that's not too prominent. That's definitely an aftertaste. The aftertaste is that kind of red candied fruit thing, that sort of spicy note that I'm talking about from the malt base, and the um, and a little bit of that kind of spicy floral aromatic note on the sides of the tongue from the hops. But yeah, the boozy caramel notes, I think, start to build as you kind of adjust to this beer as well. But what I can say about it is, it's really quite nice. I'd definitely drink it again. Um, it's def it's not quite as sweet as I was expecting it might be. I always like it. I have to admit, when it comes to the the Imperial Reds, I do like the malt base a little bit sweeter than it is in this one. That's just personal preference. As I always say, beer is subjective. But in terms of Imperial Reds, they've done a nice job with this one. I do like that idea that they have with it. For me, it's almost like they're trying to stick to the kind of... They're trying to keep a little bit of the traditional Englishness about the style in there. And it works really well the way they've done it, actually. A bit of a spicier hop note. And then adding a little bit of that into the malt base. I don't know if they, they've maybe put a little tiny touch of black malt into this one or something. I would guess that the colour would be a little bit, would be a bit darker than that because the black malt can really turn the colour of your beer very, very fast, even with very, very little amounts. But for me, um, it's, it is a nice beer. And as I say, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. It's, 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 it's good. And I like how it's got this little bit of kind of English classicness to it. That's what I think really stands out to me about this beer. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, what I would say about this one, I think it's maybe full bodied. Yeah, to me, the mouthfeel of this one comes across as quite full bodied. Carbonation is very, very smooth. It does have a little bit of a prickle, to be fair, but it's more of an oily mouthfeel, this one, than anything else. It's got a good little bit of boozy warmth to it as well at 9%. And I think, again, that suits it. That's what I always want from a. Uh, um, from a nice kind of imperial red beer. It does have that nice little bit of warmth to it. And um, there's a good bit of hoppy bitterness to it. The malt base, as I say, it, it has a little bit of sweetness to it, but that kind of bitter, that um, bitter, almost kind of spicy note that comes out of it is quite interesting. Some nice sort of floral aromatic notes, a little bit of juicy fruit. Um, but overall, it is, it, it's a nice beer. And I, as I say, the thing that stands out to me about this one is that they've taken quite a few of the American characteristics. They've kept them in there to make a sort of modern craft beer, if you like. But they've also retained a bit of that kind of classic note from the English style. So it's really interesting, this one. Have a go at it and see what you think for yourself. What I want to do now, though, is see if I can get a hold of a stout and a regular IPA from these guys. As I always say, when you try a new brewery, what you want to do is have something from the dark side of things and something from the lighter end of things. This one's a little bit more kind of in the middle, so it would be cool to get more of an idea of what the scope of this brewery's kind of capabilities are. But for me, this is a nice beer. I love the Imperial Reds. 
And this is one that I definitely drink again. I think that's a good way to kind of finish off on this review. So hopefully I can actually get a hold of some of their, their beers. I'm not sure how easy it will be up here in the northeast, but um, yeah, hopefully I can review some more of them in the future. But the Lacerated Sky, really nice beer. Have a go at it. It's got a little bit of an American, it's quite more of an American beer, but it has a little bit of that English classicness to it. Really nice, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again, and it makes me want to try some more of the Black Irish beers. So yeah, I think that's a good way to sign off. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Black Iris Brewery as well. And do let me know any other Nottingham beers and breweries that I should be checking out as well. But this has been an interesting one. Thank you for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. The Lacerated Sky and Imperial Red at 9% from the Black Iris Brewery down in Nottingham. Slange just now. Make sure you check out Harry at Blue Nose Beer Reviews. He reviews a lot of beers from that area. Cheers.